let's see detailed radiological anatomy of hrct temporal bone focusing on the middle ear and its pathologies my name is dr aishwarya radiologist so we'll be seeing anatomical illustrations and scrolled ct images section by section we'll see how the structures look on axial and coronal ct also on gross anatomical sections before moving on to actual structures of middle ear we'll see the parts of temporal bone this is the temporal bone made of five parts one in orange is mastoid one in pink is tympanic part then we have petrous part the flattened one is the squamous part and in lower sections we can see the styloid process we'll see these temporal bone parts on axial hrct sections of temporal bone here we can see the mastoid part of temporal bone with mastoid air cells these are the air filled cells which contain bony lamellae in between as we move down in lower sections we can see the mastoid part of temporal bone continuing now we can see the middle ear sections have appeared this is still the mastoid part of temporal bone up to the mastoid process here where middle ear exists it's the tympanic part of temporal bone the middle ear and the inner ear is placed in tympanic part this conical part is the petrous part of temporal bone appearing on the same sections and this flattened part anteriorly is the squamous part of temporal bone so up to this is the squamous part of temporal bone let's revise all the parts of temporal bone quickly so wherever the middle ear and inner ear exist this is the tympanic part mastoid part and the squamous part and the petrous part of temporal bone now let's move on to the lower down sections last we have one part of the temporal bone left that is the styloid process okay now we see the all the other parts ending and now this is the pointed portion of styloid process part of temporal bone extending up to parapharyngeal space coming to external ear we'll see its components on illustrations first now this is the external auditory canal which is made up of two portions one covered with a bone that is the bony part of external auditory canal one covered with a cartilage which is a cartilaginous part of external auditory canal next we have tympanic membrane tympanic membrane has two parts the lower down portion or the major portion is the pars tensa and the small portions above is called pars flaccida so here is pars flaccida here is pars tensa on ct we can see tympanic membrane best on coronal sections so wherever the pars flaccida attaches to the bony part is the scutum which is eroded in cholesteatoma or csom and this is the tympanic membrane now we see bony part of external auditory canal and this is the cartilaginous portion of external auditory canal now this small space in epitympanum between the scutum and the malleus is called the prosac space which is a starting point for cholesteatoma let's move on to the major part of the uh, temporal bone that is the middle ear we'll see the parts of the middle ear first so there is epitympanum which lies above the attachment of the tympanic membrane this mainly contains the major portions of middle ear ossicles next next we have the mesotympanum which extends from superior attachment of tympanic membrane up to inferior attachment of tympanic membrane this also contains few parts of middle ear ossicles like handle of malleus and long process of incus step is also is present in this portion next we have the hypotympanum which does not contain any valid structures is just filled with air it is extending below the inferior attachment of tympanic membrane we'll see neat labeled illustrations of middle ear ossicles and we'll see parts of each middle ear ossicle 
we have malleus the rounded portion is the head then we have the neck this thin portion is the anterior process of malleus the long inferior portion is the handle of the malleus also called as manubrium now incus has a short process the body long process and one small lenticular process which attaches to stapes now stapes has anterior crux posterior crux and a foot plate so malleus incus and stapes are the three ossicles and we saw its parts joints between these ossicles are incudo malleal joint and incudo stapedial joint in order to see intactness of middle ear ossicles we have to see axial hrct sections cut into three standard sections this is the first standard section also called as ice cream cone appearance which cuts through head of the malleus and short process of the incus the one anteriorly is the head of the malleus posteriorly we have short process and the body of the incus okay this is the first standard section next standard section we have is this this also known as two dot appearance section in which bones appear as two dots the one anteriorly is nothing but the neck of malleus and one posteriorly is cutting through the long process of incus this was a second standard sections now we'll move on to the third standard section in which we have two line appearance of the middle ear ossicles now here we can see the two line appearance so what are these parts of the bone anteriorly we have handle of malleus and posteriorly we have the small lenticular process of incus so these two form two lines in the standard section 3 so next time when you want to identify three bones on axial hrct temporal bone look at these three sections ice cream cone two dot appearance and two line appearance pause and see the intactness of the we'll middle ear scroll through axial hrct sections and show you all these structures which we have learned till now mastoid part of temporal bone with mastoid air cells as we move down we can see middle ear starts appearing here we have mastoid antrum the largest mastoid air cell communicating with middle ear that communication is called the aditus here we have the aditus okay and then we'll move down we'll move down now we can start seeing the ossicles and we have the first standard section that is ice cream cone appearance section in which we can see anteriorly the head of malleus and posteriorly we can see the short process of incus okay now i'm showing you the middle ear structures the inner ear structures i will be showing in detail later along with the facial nerve next moving down we can see two dot appearance or the second standard section in which anteriorly we can see the neck of malleus and posteriorly we can see long process of incus yes these are the two dots formed by the middle ear ossicles malleus and incus in this section itself we can see the two crux of the stapes here we can see it slightly very thinned out now that is the stapes which attaches to oval window or fenestra ovalis of inner ear we'll move slightly down now we can see lenticular process of incus attaching to the stapes that is the incudo stapedial joint which we saw previously now that is the part of malleus here we can see two recesses formed by the bony processes separated by a triangular portion of the bone these two recesses are named lateral one is the facial recess this one and here we have sinus tympani these both recesses are separated by a triangular bony portion called as pyramidal eminence okay now we'll move down to lower sections here we can see two line appearance not able to get them in the same section but this is a third standard section of two line appearance anteriorly we have 
handle of malleus posteriorly we have lenticular process of incus so this is the handle of malleus here and here we have the lenticular process of the incus now we have done with three standard sections and we have seen all parts of the middle ear which we could see on axial hrct sections here we can see handle of malleus attaching to the tympanic membrane and eustachian tube is passing anteriorly communicating middle ear cavity with the pharynx this is how tympanic membrane appears on axial hrct images it's very thin but we can see the intactness if it is present now this portion of external auditory canal which is covered by the bone is called bony part of external auditory canal and as we move down here we have the cartilaginous portion of external auditory canal opening to external auditory meatus which has pinna now we have seen parts of external auditory canal and middle ear on hrct moving on to inner ear and its part it has three parts one is the cochlea the rounded portion the bulbous part vestibule and three semicircular canals we'll see all these structures on axial hrct images all these portions are very neatly seen we can also see the supplying nerve that is the vestibular cochlear nerve along with facial nerve forming 7 8 nerve complex these are the axial hrct images again now we'll scroll and we'll focus on inner ear structures and the 7 8 nerve complex the superior most portion what we see is the superior semicircular canal yes now we can see anterior and posterior portion of superior semicircular canal like two dots as we move down here we can start seeing the posterior semicircular canal this is the posterior semicircular canal and in lower sections we can see this bulbous portion where all the semicircular canal attaches that is the vestibule and we can see lateral semicircular canal in a good section we can see completely we can see internal auditory meatus and internal auditory canal through which the nerves come see here we can see lateral semicircular canal in continuity it's a very good section connecting to the vestibule now here we can see internal auditory meatus through which the neural structures come through and here this portion is nothing but the facial nerve going anteriorly the one supplying vestibular cochlear system is the vestibular cochlear nerve anteriorly we have the facial nerve and the one supplying vestibule is the vestibular cochlear nerve so in this section we can see the vestibule the bulbous portion very ni nicely now anteriorly we can trace the facial nerve and its entire course this is how the facial nerve runs in the same section we can see part of the posterior semicircular canal like a dot here okay now as we move down we can still see the vestibule here and anteriorly we have oval window con connecting middle ear to the vestibule here and here we can start seeing the cochlea now let's see the part of cochlea in detail this is the inner these are the inner turns of cochlea that's the innermost turn and this is the another inner turn of cochlea the slight small structure communicating is the cochlear nerve and here to the vestibule we have that vestibular portion of vestibulocochlear nerve 
we have still not seen the basal turn of cochlea which is lower down we'll go to the lower down sections and we'll try to identify that later now here we have stepis stepis is communicating with inner ear by attaching itself to the oval window not seen in the section basal turns of cochlea this is the basal turn of cochlea and this is the round window you can see the opening and this communicates middle ear to the inner ear and it's said to be covered by a secondary tympanic membrane we'll see facial nerve and its parts in detail so what are the segments of the facial nerve we have the labyrinthine segment next we have a bend or a genu that's also called as geniculate ganglion or first genu of facial nerve then we have tympanic or horizontal segment of facial nerve then again the facial nerve takes a turn that's a second genu last part we have mastoid or vertical segment of facial nerve i won't be explaining the cervical segments or the segments of facial nerves after exiting the stylomastoid foramen this is just for temporal bone segments all these on axial hrct images we'll see now we have seen the inner ear structures already we have seen how the internal auditory meatus and internal auditory canal looks like through which the 78 nerve complex passes through anteriorly we are we can see labyrinthine segment of facial nerve close to the labyrinthine portion of inner ear here we have the first bend or the genu also known as geniculate ganglion or the facial nerve in continuity we can see the horizontal segment or the tympanic segment of the facial nerve we can see it much better on lower sections there's a thin portion of bone separating the tympanic portion of facial nerve from middle ear that's the lateral wall of facial canal so we'll move down to a lower section in lower section now here we can see the tympanic or horizontal segment of facial nerve very clearly after this it takes a second turn and this is the second genu of the facial nerve now from the horizontal segment after second genu it moves down so it moves vertically so that portion which moves vertically is close to the mastoid air cells hence known as mastoid portion or the vertical segment of the facial nerve see here we can see it like a dot because it's running vertically downwards this is the vertical segment of the facial nerve as we move down we can see it exiting through the stylomastoid foramen of the mastoid portion of temporal bone we'll see these parts of facial nerve on coronal sections also here we have internal acoustic canal we have labyrinthine portion of facial nerves here superiorly near to the turns of cochlea now we have the first genu or the bend geniculate ganglion the one closer to the middle ear we have here the tympanic portion of facial nerve separated by a thin bony wall here we can see the facial nerve still this lateral wall of facial recess is very thin it can be eroded in cholestatoma cases so we have to see its intactness next we can see it taking a second turn or the second genu of the facial nerve somewhere here after which it runs vertically downwards so when it runs downwards we call it as vertical segment or since it is in the mastoid portion of bone we have another name that is mastoid part of the facial nerve we can see it exiting through the stylomastoid foramen i have seen all structures of middle ear external ear and inner ear in detail in this video so if you want more radiological anatomy video you please comment down what videos you want i will try to do those videos please follow our page on youtube and instagram at radiology doodles thank you